Coming to another question, you have written a very interesting book, Negationism in India. Now, do you think that this negationism is becoming weaker in India these days, say, especially after Modi's government? Or Modi, Modi coming to the power, in the election is itself a indication of negationism becoming weak. Right. Yes. Okay, let's first define the term uh, negationism, negationism is a French term for the denial of the Holocaust. That is to say the genocide uh, committed by the Nazi regime or its SS section um, on the Jewish people. And so negationism means the, the, the fact of uh, the attempt to show that the Holocaust, the genocide of the Jewish people never happened. So there is such a movement uh, less and less today, you know. I mean, the generation that cared about the events of the Second World War is dying or is dead by now. So, the, the sort of creative phase of negationism, where they try to find evidence that there was never a, a Holocaust, uh, that's that's really over. But you still have the. Uh, the, 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 the welcoming and the, the, the repetition of that belief in the Muslim world, which is very large. So like 10 years ago, there was a conference in Tehran where they brought together the last, you know, the aging European negationists who had investigated this, um, and then the upcoming Islamic negationists who did not know the history of it, you know, they're not going to learn German just to read the texts and so on. Uh, but still, you know, they, they have this basic belief, yeah, you know, the Jews are playing a trick on us. And so one of the tricks they have invented is to make people believe that they are poor, hapless victims and therefore we owe them something. And, and, and therefore <coughs> we owe them a country. And for them, this is the explanation of the state of Israel. You know, the state of Israel is only there because Europeans were, or as they say, had been made to feel guilty for the Holocaust, which is a Jewish trick. And you know, that's how they put it, right? Um, so, you know, that belief, I mean, I have I've seriously investigated that. I, you know, at the time, I was m mostly active in journalism. I am one of the only journalists who has ever seriously investigated this movement, talked with negationists, allowed them to really lay their cards on the table. Um, now, I must say, it's not true that those people are liars, in the sense that a liar is someone who says something that he knows is not true. No, in this case, these people believe that what they are saying is true, only they're mistaken. And so I learn more and more and more about the evidence that they use, and so I found ultimately, you know, it's wanting. Here and there, there's some little point that, you know, finally turns out to be true, and that is what gives them confidence that, th therefore, their whole message is true, which it is not. Anyway, so the, 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 the term negationism, negationism, can be generalized to mean the denial of a genocide. So, it can be applied in India to the denial of the massacres by the Islamic invaders of the Hindus. And so those massacres are very much a reality. Uh, a lot of work remains to be done in, in tabulating, you know, what the figures are, you know, how large. Uh, there are many parts of India where there are no chronicles, you know, what are we missing? 
uh, where have chroniclers exaggerating, where have they left things out, and so on. This is a huge, a huge uh, research that is still to be done. But by and large, we know, mainly from Muslim sources, what happened. Um, it is also corroborated by archaeological evidence of all the Hindu temples that have been destroyed. There is enormous archaeological evidence of that. Very often the Muslims themselves were proud of what they had done. They tried to show in their mosques the remains of destroyed temples, you know, to show off their victory. And so their chronicles are very explicit about it. You can't deny that. Um, so, you see, there have been many massacres of Hindus, uh, in, with in total certainly more than six million victims. Six million is the number of uh, Jews killed in the Holocaust. But of course, it's difficult to compare the two in the sense that we're talking about a huge territory over more than a thousand years. So, it's not so difficult that the numbers are bigger. But, you know, then we have the question, is this a genocide? Does the term genocide apply? Um, you know, what are the reasons for it? Uh, in, in very brief, you know, I can list a few things and you can think about that further uh, among the differences. You see, many Jews resent that if Hindus say, yeah, you know, our Holocaust was bigger than yours, you know? But it's true that more Hindus were killed by Muslims than the Jews were killed by Germans. However, there are also differences in the opposite direction. You see, the Jewish Holocaust was very intense. As a Jew, you had no escape. If they caught you, it meant your death. Uh, quite a few Jews in those days thought that they could escape by converting. Now, in, uh, in Holland, there was a, a moment when the Catholic bishops issued a statement against the Nazi occupiers of their country. Now, to teach them a lesson, Hitler said, okay, you know, so far we have accepted the, the presence of Jews among the Catholic clergy, because quite a few Jews had converted, had become Catholics. So there was the famous case of uh, Edith Stein, uh, she was Jewish born, she had become Catholic and she had become a nun. And so she was arrested and she was given the same treatment as all the other Jews. So they made clear, you see, converting to Catholicism or any other religion is no escape. You are Jewish born, we, we want you and we want to kill you. Right? Now that never happened to Hindus. You see, Hindus always have an escape. Now, of course, in the rough and tumble of a wartime situation, of a conquest, you could not always, uh, you could not always avail of that possibility. But in principle, you could always convert. If, if your city was besieged by the Muslim army and you thought, oh my God, I don't want to burn to death or, or I don't want to end in slavery or whatever, well, Strictly speaking, in theory, nothing prevented you of raising the white flag and walking up to the Muslim army and say, oh, okay, you know, me, I want to become a Muslim. Well, yeah, you couldn't save your Hinduism, but you could save your life. Yeah, and so yeah. that's a big difference. Um, now, this is just to explain the term negationism, right? So there have been massacres, but they were of a different nature than what happened to the Jews. And so I, I would hesitate to throw terms like genocide around. You know, first properly invest, investigate this before you use charged terminology like that.